Hi there. Thanks for joining me today as I make my fireworks roast. Now you probably know this as a beef pot roast, but fireworks roast is what my children have always called it. The secret to making this fabulous fall apart tender roast is really just to dump everything together and let it cook really long and slow. In this way, all the connective tissues in the meat will just melt away and the meat will be so tender that all you'll need is a fork. Here are the ingredients you'll need. You can refer back to this at the end or visit my webpage and print out a recipe to bring to the grocery store with you. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is to trim my roast of all the exterior fat that's, you know, the big chunks. Um, I do this personally because my children do not like the fat on the edges. If you like it on there, feel free to leave it on there. Okay, then I'm going to season the roast pretty liberally with some Creole seasoning. This seasoning already has lots of spices in it together, so this is going to save us steps and time. Now I'm using a chuck roast for this dish, okay? Uh, it stands up to hours long of cooking, and it has some marbling in the meat, and that's going to be really tender. Okay, so season the meat really tender, sorry, really heavily, and then in a heavy pot, I'm using my Le Creuset Dutch oven here, get your oil really hot. Once it's really hot, you'll see it kind of shimmering. You want to put the roast in there to sear. Now, once you put it in there, leave it alone. Don't try to move it. Just leave it alone until a beautiful brown color has developed. Okay? Once the brown color has developed, it will release itself, and you shouldn't have to, like, tug it up. Now, one tip about searing the meat is that your meat will sear a lot better if you dry it first. So if it's real wet or drippy, um, sometimes how they come out of a package, it's not going to get a good sear. So remember to dry your meat real well before you season it, and um, you'll, you'll get a better caramelization on the meat. Okay, once one side is seared really nicely, keep turning it until all the edges are, are beautiful and browned, even on the not just the top and the bottom, but each edge. Now, I like to use like a long, um, my children call it a pitchfork for this, but a long, um, I don't know, what do you call it? A long meat fork, I guess. Okay, after everything is seared, um, you can just turn off the heat. Um, turn off the heat, go light the, pr the oven to 350, get that preheating. Now, to the seared meat, just add all your other stuff. I'm going to leave my vegetables in fairly large pieces because they're going to cook for several hours. And if I cook them really small, then they're going to just be mushy by the time we eat them. And I don't want mushy, so I'm leaving them fairly large. Okay, so I'm going to throw in some carrots, um, some onions, big chunks of onions, probably like uh, in quarters or eighths, um, several cloves of garlic, uh, and about a medium chop three or four small red onions. I just cut these in half because I like a big chunk of, of uh, potatoes left at the end. Um, I'm going to add one third of each, a red, yellow, and orange bell pepper cut into big chunks. If you'd like a green bell pepper, have at it. Um, my husband doesn't care for them, so I didn't put them in there, but um, go ahead and add whatever kind you, you prefer. A few stalks of celery cut into large pieces. These are probably uh, a third or a fourth of a stalk each. Now that I have all my vegetables in there, I'm going to season it up. I'm going to add in one packet of um, the Lipton Secrets onion, mush onion mushroom, um, like soup recipe, whatever, soup seasoning. And these are also available in lower sodium varieties if, if you choose to do that. Okay, so after I have my onion mushroom soup mix in there, I'm going to add one can of golden mushroom condensed soup. Um, make this your choice as well. If you want to just use cream of mushroom soup or cream of celery soup or whatever, you know, whatever you prefer. I like this golden mushroom soup because it has a beautiful dark color. I'm going to add one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Now these are going to cook down quite a bit and they're not going to really look like big chunks of tomatoes at the end. Uh, I just like what it does in the background. I'm going to add a whole box of beef broth, and again, this one is also available in a reduced sodium variety if you'd like. 
Now, once I add all that in there, if my meat and vegetables are not completely covered, then I go ahead and add water to completely cover everything. If they're covered, I just leave it like that. All right, throw everything uncovered in the oven at 350 degrees. I'm gonna set the timer for four hours and go and take care of whatever else. Now, usually I turn my meat after the first two hours. Now, after four hours, a lot of the water is going to evaporate and we are gonna get this beautiful, silky sauce that's condensed down. It's gonna be beautiful texture. The meat will be falling apart and the vegetables be very, very tender. You can see here that there's a slight char on the vegetables and I just love that. It's just like a little bit of crunchy edge and, and I, I really, that's one of my favorite parts. So here we have this beautiful roast. You can just pick it up. You can't pick it up with a fork. Um, you kind of have to just get a spoon or in there and grab a bunch of it. Um, sometimes I serve it over rice, sometimes over mashed potatoes, you know, whatever you like. So yeah, this is an old fashioned recipe, but this is comfort food at its finest. Now don't let anybody tell you that it's really hard to cook a roast because it's really not. You dump everything in there, get it well seasoned, and you walk away to this beautiful, beautiful dish. I hope you'll try this recipe and I hope you'll enjoy it. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.